Hey y'all, welcome back. This week we're making some more easy and quick delicious meals. We're gonna start out with making some bang bang shrimp. I've already got my rice going in my instant pot here. It's just two cups of rice, two cups of water on the rice function, let it do its thing. So we're gonna start out with the sauce. In here, I've just got some mayo. Now I'm doubling the sauce. Just be sure to check out the link in the description box below so you can get the full measurements. So I've got some mayo here and we're going to add in some sriracha. Now with this, it kind of goes with your heat tolerance. I'm going to add in about two tablespoons and kind of go from there on the spice level. All right, so I've got that in there and I'm going to be using some white wine vinegar. It calls for rice wine vinegar. I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use white wine vinegar. So we're just gonna add some of that in there and we're also going to add in some sugar just to sweeten it up a little bit. And now we're just going to mix this together taste it and if we need to add any more um, vinegar or sugar or sriracha we can adjust that from there okay that looks mixed up pretty well so i'm just going to go ahead and give this a taste oh that's good nice and spicy so we are going to stop that there i'm going to put a lid on this pop this in the refrigerator and then we'll start on the shrimp all right, y'all, we're going to start on the shrimp now. I've got some shrimp here. Now, these are peeled and deveined. I'm using large, but you can use any kind of size that you want. And I've also got some cornstarch here. My rice is done. To my cornstarch, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper just to season this up. Kind of mix this together. I want the shrimp to have some flavor to it but you can add any other kind of spices or seasonings that you want so i've got that in there and now i'm going to grab a plate and we are going to start dredging take my rings off so all i'm going to do now is just take a shrimp Dredge it in the cornstarch and set it on this plate. And then I'll bring you back once I get all of the shrimp breaded. All right, y'all. So I've got my shrimp here and they're all coated in that seasoned cornstarch. I've also got a skillet over medium low heat on the stove with about an inch of oil coming up to temperature. So let's go ahead and move everything over to the stove and we'll get these started. All right, y'all, so my oil is hot, it's up to temperature, and all we're gonna do now is just take these shrimp and lay them in there. Make sure you don't overcrowd the pan because you want them to get nice and crispy. And I've got a sheet pan here that's lined with a little bit of paper towel and a um, rack to catch the oil. And we're just gonna cook these until they're nice and golden on each side and cooked through. Then we're just going to remove them to my little rack over here. And then I'll bring you back and we'll get these co coated in some sauce. And dinner will be ready. All right, y'all. So these have been cooking literally for like two minutes on each side, if that. It does not take long at all to cook shrimp and you certainly do not want to overcook your shrimp because they'll they'll get a little rubbery so once they get a little color on them just slightly you can go ahead and remove them and start on your next batch so i'm going to go ahead and finish these up and then get these ready for dinner all right guys so while the shrimp were cooling on the rack I just went ahead and shredded up a little bit of cabbage. You can do the pre-made or the pre-sliced slaw mix or the um, cabbage mix. And I diced up some tomatoes. 
just going to set those back there. So we're going to top this with those in a little bit. But first, my shrimp. These are so crunchy and flavorful. I tried one. But before we, met, we uh, put this all together, we're going to add a little bit of this sauce to this shrimp. Just to coat the shrimp just slightly in this sauce. And we're going to carefully kind of toss this together just to coat this shrimp. Y'all, this smells so good. I don't want to remove the coating from the shrimp, so I'm going to stop here and then we'll just add more sauce later when we make our bowls. But this is pretty much done. All we're going to do now is just assemble it and I will show you my plate. Here is my bowl. I just added some rice to the bottom of the bowl, topped it with some shredded cabbage, some diced tomatoes, then added some shrimp, more sauce on the top with some green onions and some sesame seeds and you guys this was so good if you don't like spice I would go a little light-handed with the sriracha so I would start off with one to two teaspoons and then way up from there but this was absolutely delicious all right you guys today we are going to be making some buffalo chicken pasta it sounded so good so we're going to make it today now i'm going to start off by making the pasta i've got some rotini here i've got about 10 ounces i've got some water right over here in my pot it's already been salted and it's up to a boil so i'm going to cook my pasta and before I drain the pasta, I'm going to reserve a half of a cup of the cooking liquid. So that way we can use it to thin out the sauce later. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here and let that start cooking. And we're going to give that a little stir. Just so they don't stick together or stick to the pot. And we're just going to let that do its thing. In the meantime, we're going to cook up some onions. All right, so I've got my skillet here. It's over medium low heat, and we are going to add just a little bit of olive oil to my pan, about one to two tablespoons. And I'm going to add in one small diced onion, or you can use a shallot. I have just regular white onions on hand, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. And I'm going to kind of season this up with a little bit of salt and some pepper just to help sweat out those onions. And we're going to cook these down until they get nice and tender. Should take about three to four minutes. All right, now we're going to add in some garlic. If you hear any whirring in the background, it's my stove. I have it on because it is quite hot in here. So. We're going to cook this up for just a couple of seconds. I can already smell that garlic, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. You don't want to overcook your garlic. It'll burn very quickly. All right, I've got a block of cream cheese. I'm going to add that right in there, as well as some chicken stock. And we are just going to break this down and get this all nice and combined in that chicken stock. Make sure all the lumps are out. It should take just a few minutes to get this all mixed together. And then we'll season it up with some more salt and pepper. All right, so that is completely melted and incorporated and smooth. We're going to go in and add in some buffalo sauce. You can use any brand that you like as well as some ranch dressing. You can make your own, use store-bought. I have Ken's ranch dressing, it's our favorite, um, if I don't make it homemade. So I'm just gonna add that right in there. Make sure to get that last little bit out. And I'm going to give this a stir, and make sure all of this is nice and incorporated. Okay, that looks good. It smells good. Okay, so here I've got a mix of Monterey Jack cheese and cheddar cheese, and I'm just going to add about a cup of this to this mixture. Okay, that looks about right. 
We're going to mix this all together. It doesn't have to be completely melted because it's going to melt uh, when it goes into the oven. But if you want to melt it completely down before you add anything else, you most certainly can. All right, so that is melted down. And I went and added a little bit more salt and pepper, and it tastes delicious. My pasta is done, so I'm going to go ahead and add in all of my pasta. Now my pasta is al dente. It will finish cooking once we put it in the oven and it will absorb the delicious flavor of the sauce. So don't overcook your pasta. Now I'm just going to kind of mix this together just to coat this pasta and this delicious sauce. And then we'll add in our reserved pasta liquid. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add in my pasta liquid, the whole half cup. I'm going to make sure all of this is well combined. And that pasta liquid will help finish cooking that pasta. I've got some chicken here. You can do rotisserie. You can cook your own. Um, whatever is more convenient for you. I just cooked some this morning and let it cool and then shredded it. It's two chicken breasts. I'm going to add the entire thing in here. We're going to stir this up and get this all incorporated. Now, if you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can do all of this in a pot or a very large skillet and then transfer it to a baking dish and then put it in the oven. But for the sake of convenience, and I love cast iron, I'm going to do it all in my cast iron pot here. And that pasta is already absorbing all of that liquid. This is going to be so delicious. All right, so I'm going to kind of level this off a little bit. I'm going to cut my heat off because this is done at this point before we put it in the oven. And I'm going to add the remaining cheese right on top. And this is going to melt down in the oven and just get delicious. So I'm going to pop this in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so, just until that cheese is completely melted and slightly bubbly and brown on top. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I pull it out of the oven. All right, you guys, this is done. Just pulled it out of the oven. So what I'm going to do now is drizzle over some extra ranch. You can do this on your plate. And I'm going to add some green onions. And I'm going to save a little bit for topping when, when we get it on the plate. But this is good and ready to go. It smells delicious. I am ready to dig in. So I'm going to go ahead and make my plate and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all plated up. All right, you guys, here is my bowl. I just added it to my bowl, I topped it with some more ranch dressing and some sliced green onions, called it good, and this was so good. Very easy, very flavorful. Next time I make this, I'm going to add more buffalo sauce, but other than that, it was really, really good. Hey, y'all. Today, we're gonna be making a one skillet meal. I've got some butter and oil in my pan here. It's just a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna be making salmon with lemon orzo. It just sounded so good to me. So we're gonna make it today. While that is heating up, I've got some salmon fillets here and I've just seasoned both sides with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. And we're gonna sear these on both sides until they are nice and cooked through. It shouldn't take too, too long. It's 
especially if your salmon's like kind of thin. But if you get the thicker, it might take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to cook these just a couple of minutes on each side. And then we're going to remove these from the pan and put them on a plate. So I'm going to go ahead and let these cook and then we'll come back and add everything else. All right, y'all. So I've got my salmon and it's right here. It's nice and cooked through and I just set it on a plate. I'm just going to let it sit here and hang out. I'm going to add just a little bit more oil to my pan and I've got my pan down on low just right above low and we're going to cook up some onion I'm going to season this up with a little bit of salt and some pepper we're going to cook this up until it is nice and tender it should take about three to four minutes All right, now that the onions are nice and tender, we're going to go ahead and add in some minced garlic. Got about three cloves of garlic here. And we're just going to cook this until it's fragrant, about 30 seconds or so. And those onions are nice and tender, and they've picked up some of that color that was on the pan. Nice golden brown color. Now we're going to add in some thyme. This is just dried thyme give that a little mix and I've got a cup of orzo here I'm just going to add this right in here and we're going to toast this up just a minute or two get some color on that orzo y'all this smells so good but we are not done yet we've got a few more ingredients to go we're going to let this cook and it's going to be absolutely delicious. All right, so this is toasted up for just about two minutes and it's got some nice color on it. I'm going to go ahead and add in some chicken broth. We're gonna give this a stir and if there's any stuck on bits that's on the pan, you can kind of scrape that up. But I don't feel any, so I think we're good. Now we're just going to bring this up to a boil, and then we're going to reduce it down to a simmer. All right, so this has come up to a boil, and I just got it reduced down to a simmer. And we're going to let this cook for about eight minutes. We're going to come in here and stir it ever so often so that orzo doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan so i'm just going to let this go and we'll come back and add some more ingredients all right so this has been cooking for about 10 minutes it smells good the orzo has absorbed most of the liquid so i'm going to go ahead and add in some spinach now i buy fresh spinach and then just keep it in the freezer and pull it out whenever i need it so we're going to add that in there we're going to mix this through, make sure it's all nice and incorporated. All right, now I'm going to add in some lemon juice. This is just the juice of half of a lemon and some grated Parmesan cheese. We're going to mix this through and make sure that lemon juice and Parmesan cheese is all nice and combined with that orzo. Oh, this smells so good. It looks so good, but we've still got to add the salmon back in. So just make sure all of this is nice and combined. Now I'm just going to give this a taste, make sure the seasoning is right. And if I need to add any more salt or pepper, I will. A tiny bit of salt. And a little bit more pepper. And then I think this will be good to go. I'm going to turn my heat down to low. Give this a good little mix. All right. Now I'm just going to add the salmon right back in there. 
And we're just going to let this simmer just a couple of more minutes until that salmon is warmed through. And then this will be done. I've got some red pepper flakes here. Now, if you don't want this spicy or like a, with a little bit of kick, you can leave the red pepper flakes out. But I'm just going to add just a few right on top. Not many at all. And then this is good to go. You can add some more Parmesan cheese to the top of this if you like. But I'm going to call this done. And then I'm going to plate this up and I'll show you my plate. All right, you guys, here is my plate. I just spooned some of that orzo onto my plate and then topped the salmon on top of it. And then sprinkled over some X cheese and green onions. Sliced up a tomato, added that as a side. Top those tomatoes with salt and pepper because nothing goes better with tomatoes than salt and pepper. You guys, this was so good and it was so easy, full of flavor. Highly recommend all of these dishes. All of the links to these recipes will be in the description box below for you guys. So that is going to wrap up this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.